Welcome to another episode. I'm out here. It's an overcast day, but it doesn't matter. I'm going clamming. It's a little windy outside too, so that's why I'm doing my intro in my car. But yeah, I've got this new GoPro hat. I want to test that out today. See how that works. The, the reason why I'm going clamming today, um, I'll probably eat a couple of them, but really the goal is to get clams to use as bait for flounder. I want to do some flounder fishing. Um, it's spring, so flounder are starting to come into the bays and the harbors and stuff, so I want to use clams as bait for flounder. So I'm going out today to catch some clams to use to catch some flounder. Anyways, let's get going. All right, I'll just take a second to show you what I'm using today. I have a clamming rake, a bucket, just any old bucket will do, and a set of gloves. Also, I'm wearing boots and some junk clothes because you get kind of muddy doing this. So I actually didn't come at the best tide. What I usually try to do is come a couple hours before low tide. That way I can see the clams that are shooting water out of their holes. So on this day, I actually came a couple hours after low tide. So the tide was incoming and what I decided to do was just go close to the water and start digging. The cool thing about this spot, and a lot of spots really, is that when you're digging for clams, you can also get sandworms. So some people call them sea worms, some people call them sandworms. Whatever you call them, they're great bait for, for everything, really, for stripers or for flounder. Flounder love eating sandworms. And here you can see I've already found one little soft shell clam. Now these little ones, these little baby ones, I don't take these, um, you leave these so they can grow. It is a good sign if you can find them that quickly though. So there's a good chance there'll be other clams around on the clam bed. And here you can see I've actually got my first sandworm. Little sandworm here, they have little pinchers and they're pretty gnarly looking creatures, but the, you know, they're great flounder bait and striper bait as well. And this is what I'm after. These are soft shell clams, also called steamers. Here's another sandworm. They are getting bigger in size. That's a good sign. I'm gonna keep them and then use them as flounder bait. Right here, I found a blue mussel. Now you can eat blue mussels and a lot of people like to eat them. You can also put them in a chum bag and that'll help draw over the, the fish, the flounder, the stripers. As you can see, the tide is incoming, so it's kind of chasing me uh, up the bank, but there's still some good stuff. I'm still finding some stuff. In general, clamming is a lot of work. I find that it definitely puts some strain on my back and my legs, and the next day or two, I'm pretty sore. It definitely doesn't hurt to do some stretches before you go out there digging for clams or for sandworms. And speaking of sandworms, there's a sandworm right here. Here's an up-close shot of it. You might be able to see its pinchers. It's a really gnarly looking animal, but uh, I tell you what, they really are the perfect bait for stripers or for flounder. One of the cool things about clamming is you just kind of dig and then all of a sudden you just spot one and it just almost seems like it's surreal. Well, this is a good size soft shell clam. It's Perfect for eating or perfect for using for bait. So I'm just gonna wash it off here just to show you guys a little bit better what they look like when they're a good size shock shell clam steamer. Now here are some soft shell clams that are too small. Uh, there is no actual size limit where I'm digging for these clams. A lot of states do have a size limit, but I'm returning these ones back into the where they were because they just they're too small and they're just not really worth it. I want them to grow and become bigger. Do you have anything 
Huh? Yeah. Not the best tide, but it's okay. I do have to say that the clam digging community is kind of like the fishing community. There's a lot of nice, helpful people out there, and uh, it's, it's good to see. In case you didn't see, if you watch right here, a clam squirts a stream of water at my face like as I'm digging, so it made me laugh. This is the one that just squirted me. Nice clam. muscle and if you're digging for clams or you're digging for sandworms be sure to cover up the holes that you dig kind of make it look like you've never been there that's the idea so it's not my biggest shellfish haul I've got soft shell clams here uh, some mussels but uh, really the goal today was just to get enough for bait to go fishing for flounder so that's probably one day's worth of bait right there all right, now I'm gonna go home to the kitchen to prep the clams so I can use them as bait. So here are some of the soft shell clams that I collected today. These are steamers, soft shell clams. And what I'm gonna do is basically open them up and then slice them into strips and then salt those strips and then freeze it. Save it for a great flounder bait. All right, so here we have the soft shell clam. And what I'm using is just a regular knife. And once you break the seal with the knife, you can see here, a lot of uh, sea water kind of comes out. But uh, you want to cut away from yourself and just kind of slowly cut around. You'll, you'll feel the little bit of muscle that attaches the shells to each other. So once you cut through that, it's actually pretty easy. These actually, you can almost just open up by hand. But I like to try and pop the seal a little bit before I open it up. Now, I don't pretend to be a wildlife biologist at all. I actually wasn't very good at science in school, but basically what we've got here in the middle, we've got that big belly that's just full of guts. Around the edges, we've got the foot and the neck, which is like a siphon. And the belly or the, the guts, they don't tend to stick very well onto a hook, so they're kind of better for chum. I pretty much just use the neck, the foot, and the muscular parts. They just stick on the hook a little bit better, they're a little bit more sturdy, and they'll be able to freeze better. And I cut those into strips, and those are kind of what I'm using for the flounder bait. I definitely recommend saving all the parts because even those shells still have some muscle on them, and if you dip them in the water, you can use that as a chum bag for sure. I find if you cut the siphon or the neck you can get at least two pieces out of that, and that's really good strips that will easily fit onto the hook like a flounder hook. And once you've got the strips cut, you can put them onto some paper towels and then use other paper towels to kind of dry them off. The goal is to get them as dry as possible before you salt and freeze them. And if you're wondering what I did with the sandworms, I put them in a plastic container I poked some holes in the top of the lid so they could breathe, and I put in some of the seaweed and some of the mud to kind of keep it damp and wet, and then I put it in the fridge, and in my experience, they should last at least a week. So as you can see, it actually comes out to be a lot of pieces of bait. There weren't that many clams, but after you cut them up into these small bits, it actually ends up being a lot of pieces of bait, and those will go on my hooks when I'm fishing for flounder. And the rest, these are kind of the leftover, that's actually gonna be basically a chum bag. What I'll do is I'll poke some holes in that, put some water in that. When I go to the spot to fish, I'll dip that in the water and just kind of let that scent of all the, the guts and the muscle and the clam get in the water so that'll draw the 
flounder over to my spot and then I'll drop these down here with a weight and the little hooks and hopefully the flounder will come over and start nibbling and that's the goal. So in order to preserve this stuff, it's drying now, what I'm going to do is give it kind of a salt bath. Uh, I'm going to take these pieces here, like here's a chunk, I've got salt in here and I'm going to kind of rub it around in there and get it covered in salt and the idea is it's preservative we're basically drying out the meat and it should help it kind of like get a little tougher and that means it'll stay on the hook longer so that's the goal I'll just uh, show you when I'm done now I'd suggest that you're real generous with that salt um, I'm just kind of putting a base down rubbed all that meat in there and then I'm putting more on top and then I'll probably put some even more on top bathing that stuff in salt that's going to preserve the meat so that I can use it in the next week or two after I freeze it I'll be able to peel it off little parts and uh, it should be tough and stay on the hook and that's pretty much it I've got it out on the porch I'm going to let it dry for a few hours and it's covered in salt maybe I'll add even a little bit more salt then I'll put the lid on put it in the freezer and I should have some great flounder bait coming up so Guys, check out the next episode. Um, it should be my flounder fishing episode, and I'll be using this bait. So I drove away without doing any sort of outro or recap. So I drove over to in the nearest park that was near some water. This isn't where I went clamming. Um, I went clamming somewhere else. Anyways, if you're new, hi, I'm Dave. Uh, I, I'm the seaside nomad. I go out and I hang out near the ocean and uh, travel. And speaking of traveling, I'm going to be going next month to somewhere down south, a traveling destination for fishing. And I've taken two of my buddies with me, so look out for that one. Sorry about the wind. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Catch you later.